Is he Space Jesus? We'll see. Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Audrey. If you're new here, today we are going to be talking about... What episode are we on? <laughs> the fourth episode of Mandalorian Season 2. Chapter whatever the hell. I didn't... This is crazy. <laughs> I was so tired this morning. This is chapter 12 titled The Siege. I'm going to do a breakdown and then we're going to talk about my thoughts about the episode and what I expect in future episodes. If you're new here, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe. I do three videos a week. I do weekly Mandalorian videos. And on Sunday, I will also be doing a Star Wars, Lego Star Wars holiday special. Is that what that was called? video on that. I already filmed it. It will be up on Sunday. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe. And if you like this video while you're watching, make sure to give it a thumbs up. But we're gonna go ahead and get started. Spoiler warning in advance. Also, I got my little Christmas tree. Enjoy that? Yeah, it's cute, isn't it? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with the breakdown. We know the Razor Crest is in crappy condition because the Mon Calamari didn't really fix it up. And Baby Yoda is trying to help Mando fix it by like putting little wires together. Very cute, very cute moment where Mando's just being like, yo, no, you need to put the blue one that you took out, you need to put the red one there. And Baby Yoda's like, ah, I don't know what to do. And then he got electrocuted, so yeah. It was just a cute moment. Baby Yoda is trying to see Mando's face because he hasn't seen Mando's face before when he is drinking the soup. I think he's like, wait, those other Mandalorians that we saw that look like you can take their helmets off, but you don't take your helmet off. What's up with that? So we don't really know how much he understands. I mean, he's definitely got a lot more vocal, which is really adorable. He sounds more like a baby. He's like cooing and and he cries and he giggles and he does a lot of stuff. So he's just ultra, ultra, ultra adorable and everybody loves him. So... Mando decides to go back to Navarro to make repairs, Navarro being the planet that Cara Dune and Grief Karga are on. I always forget his name. Carl Weathers, who directed this episode. Good for Carl Weathers. I don't know if he's done any more directing, but good for him. This is awesome. This episode is a little bit of a... I, wanna, I don't want to say filler, but... I think it was New Rockstars that said that this episode seems to really take a play out of video games and it's like we go on this mission now and then once you get here then you have to go here and then you have to go here i mean theoretically that's how star wars just works but also i talked about this in my episode two video when you have characters that you know are coming and then you just have to sit around and wait for them to show up it makes that it makes the show a little bit less exciting because you're sitting around waiting for this character to show up and it's not going to be a surprise when they do. Considering we talked about the fact that Dave Filoni is directing the next episode, it would have been very unlikely that Ahsoka was showing up in this episode. I thought maybe she would at least show up at the end and she didn't so her full reveal will be in the next episode. Cara Noon is now the Marshal of Navarro, you know, bringing back to the first episode of the season titled The Marshal, where Cobb Vanth is the marshal of the town in Tatooine. I can't exactly remember what the town was called. Grief Karga and Baby Yoda have such an adorable moment and sends two people to repair the Razor Crest, one of whom looked ultra suspicious and we find out in the end that they had they were rightfully suspicious. They leave Baby Yoda at a school and he uses the force to get a thing of cookies because he wants to eat them. They look like little macaroons. I don't know if they're cookies or crackers, whatever, but they look like blue macaroons, which is probably what they used when filming. Um, he uses the force to get them. Everybody's kind of wing and eyeing because they think he's adorable. The female protocol droid voice sounds very familiar, but I don't know who was voice acting in it, but it sounds like it's a celebrity cameo, and they tend to throw those in for, like, stormtroopers and droids. They tend to throw those things in. I did not realize when watching, but I watched, I saw a photo of it back. There is a statue to IG-11 in the city on Navarro. And yeah, 
gone, but never forgotten there, boo. They leave Baby Yoda at school. Mando, Kara, and Grief Karga, and the blue guy from the first episode. I can't remember his name. Um, and this is a great breakdown, isn't it? Is, um, they're going to take down an old Imperial base that was left over pulverize it so that the stuff that could be sold in the black market would be gone. They get there, they realize it's not very empty, it's pretty operational, and they also realize that it's not a military operation, it's a lab. There was lots of uh, Star Wars jargon in here, but what I think is going on, what I can tell you is they were using Baby Yoda's blood to try to do transfusions and create force, very force-heavy, sensitive beings. As they said M count, I'm assuming they're talking midichlorian count, because Baby Yoda has a very high midichlorian count, similarly to how Anakin had a very high midichlorian count. They also talk about the fact, and this, I, this is not just my own thing, <laughs> they talk about the fact that He's very high in the Force, which makes sense, because regular Yoda was, and we don't necessarily know where he comes from. But, we love the Rise of Skywalker, here we go. The only way that she were able to Force heal, according to Star Wars lore, unless they just retcon it, but they seemed, they came out with a companion that said this as a confirmation. The only way that you can Force heal is if you're in a die pad. So theoretically, at least according to that, Baby Yoda, the child, is one half of a dyad. We don't know who the other half is. There are theories of the other half, who the other half is. People think that Anakin was the other half of the dyad, considering that him and the child are the same age. You don't know, but, you know, if we want to get back into that, that's where that would come into play. So it looks like they're trying to make clones um, also might be kind of a hint to where I came from. Also the idea that the Emperor had stated that the Sith had the capacity to just make life. Again, Anakin was created, could have created the child as well. So who knows, uh, we're gonna have another. Is he Space Jesus? We'll see. They blow up base, yay! They escape in an Imperial tank, uh, which is, ensues in a chase with speeders and TIE fighters, which then get taken down by the Razor Crest, which I thought got repaired remarkably quickly. And Mando cleans up Baby Yoda when he throws up his little cookies that he was eating, which was a cute little father-son moment. There were more of those, love those. The New Republic tries to recruit Cara Dune to join them, asking about Alderaan because she was originally from Alderaan, which, as you remember, got completely decimated in A New Hope. In front of Leia, it's all good. Um, <laughs> and then you find out the really suspicious looking creature has planted a track tracking beacon in the Rage of Crest, so that's not going to be good for uh, Sokotana, so, you know, not, not good when they find out anything about that. And the final, you're going to ignore my heater, the final shot is Moff Gideon, who is still alive, which we know, in a Star Destroyer with, I don't know what's going on. These either are suits, they're droids, they're, I'm not sure what is going on at the end. They have, he is getting some sort of elite squad together. And I don't know, I personally believe that maybe he's trying to create more Inquisitors. Inquisitors were a group of Force-sensitive children, either they had been formerly Jedi's or they were just, they had been taken and were trained to use the dark side. So they weren't full-on Siths, but they were just trained to use the dark side. So they became evil, but not fully Sith evil, so, you know. Casey brought me a, a toy. Thanks, Casey. I'm gonna try to be quick about this. This is so annoying. You know, next week I work at 11.15 so I can wake up and I can take my sweet time when I film these videos and I get my full thoughts. Ultimately, I thought this episode was a little weak because I was waiting for some cute child moments. Good as always. 
And then they've built a little bit more into what exactly is going on with the child, which is going to be exciting, and what's going on with the Jedi, which is going to be exciting. I'm interested to see where we're going to go from here. I think we might see more clones. I think we will go to Kamino because of the, the scientist has the Kaminoan patch on him, although I don't really know that there are much humans there, other than the clones themselves, and maybe some of the Jedi. But we'll see where that goes. We don't really know how Boba Fett's going to tie in at this point. He might just be a teaser and then come in the end. I think they will return to Tatooine. God, we gotta go there, I guess. And yeah, I'm excited to see what will be going on. I'm excited to see what Ahsoka has been doing this entire time. Have they found Ezra Bridger? I would hope so at this point. Like, or did they just give up? I really want to see Sabine as well. I don't know if she'll show up, but she's, I don't know, she's still with Ahsoka. She might get dropped in name. She may get name dropped. So we'll see about that. I'm now frantic to try to get this video done. I hope Bo-Katan comes back. I hope all those people, especially because Moff Gideon's gonna collide with them. So I think there's probably gonna be some sort of giant showdown where we're gonna get every big character that gets introduced versus, you know, Moff Gideon, his little goons. But it would be a little crazy if they have a Jedi and they don't have I mean, he's wielding the dark saber, but like somebody who actually has the force. I mean, I think it might be a little possible too that they're trying to harvest some sort of blood transfusion so that Moff Gideon can be given a higher midichlorian count, get some sort of transfusion so that he can then be more power powerful with the force because you know Vader's dead. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll see. But, you know, there's always, there's always gotta be a little Sithy in the, in the mix, so we'll see. I'm sorry I rushed this at the end. I had things to say and then my mind went blank because I started going to panic mode because I have to clock in in four minutes. So, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Next video will be less rushed, or next Mandalorian video will be less rushed. I mean, the one I filmed also was because I filmed it, or was, is not rushed because I filmed it on a day off. I don't know what I'm saying at this point, but sometimes I have videos that are put together. So if you want to see on the off chance that you find me in a video that's put together, please subscribe and let me know your thoughts on the episode down below, what your thoughts are, what Ahsoka's been doing possibly until we get to next week where she'll hopefully be showing up. And thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye.